I know you've been here a while, but welcome back yeah. to UCF. The, how how different does it feel? I know you've been here, but when you walk, when you drive around this campus, walk around this campus, you remember back to your era, my era. <laughs> it's a lot different. No, it's a lot different, and the you know the campus is beautiful, and and just the the way the university and how it was planned out. You know, back when we went to school. Uh, back in the early 90s and they had the plan and all the land that they purchased to really have a plan to build all everything that's been built it's exciting to see it come true and I've always come back over the years and come to see the campus and you know drive by and all that kind of stuff but now to live here and to be able to go see it on a daily basis it's it's impressive it really is and and what the facilities and everything that we've done here with football over the years it's it's incredible and then to, to see what we're going to build it's exciting and where this place is going to be in three years is going to be incredible i mean as you make career moves right you're going to different places you're learning from different people and a little bit in the back of your head would well, be nice to be at ucf at some point now here you are offensive coordinator moving into the big 12 right yeah and it's been a, you know, it's been my dream job. It really has, you know, to be back here in Orlando, and this is my home, and where I went to school, and where I bled and sweat and tears and the whole deal, and I'm excited to be back here. And every day I, I get up and I go to work, and like I'm excited. You know, this is, this is what it's about, and and putting in that work because it means so much to me, and the school means so much to me, and. I know it means so much to so many people that I know. You and, heard that, don't you? Oh, yeah. I mean, you heard it from me when I sat down, yeah. right? And there's so many people that, you know, are so excited about where we're going and, and all those things. And and so I, I want to I, I make everybody proud. And that's, that's what I do on a daily basis is, you know, working to get that done. What did you like about the way the team adapted to the changes in the spring, right? I mean, it's hard on players, right? The change of scheme, a different coach, they've got to make changes. What did you like about the way they adapted to changes? Well, I think, you know, the, the, the biggest thing is, is I explained who I am as a coach and, and what I can do for them and what this offense is going to look like. And uh, I said, we have to build it together. And I said, Coach Malzahn is a great offensive mind, and and he is in, he's involved in a, a lot of the daily decisions with the offense, and working with him on a daily basis, and it, it's exciting. And then to be able to convert it to the players and take the pressure off of him, where he is not, you know, he doesn't have to worry about the offense, because I'm going to make sure, and you know, me communicating with the players and being with them, and knowing that that I am there for them. Um, and being at every workout and doing everything I can do to, to make sure that they know that I love them and I care about them and that, that we are going to succeed. And then to be able to install the offense. And I've been coordinating for a long time, and I know how to install offenses at the, at the right time, different situations, and also be able to know that I have a great head coach that is going to be right there hovering over me that's going to be like, okay, you know, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this, and different options to make sure that we do the best we possibly can in that process. How much did you install in spring? As far as your the, offense? I mean, we installed the entire I mean, you understand, I, I mean, there's, there's, I've run so many plays over the years. I, I've got, you know, I've got 16 different kind of playbooks in my office that <laughs> I could go pull plays from. But we pieced together what we thought would be the best with our personnel and what we needed to do to push the ball down the field and then to continue to have a great run game and then to be able to, again, be one of the top offenses in the country and to be explosive, to be great on third downs, to be great in the red zone, which we weren't last year in the red zone, we, and we turned the ball over too much and all those things. So the, the install of the offense was a – and Herb Hand had a big part to do with it and, you know, everything that we did together. And it's not about me. This is about UCF. And it's about making sure that we have the best possible offense that we can go out and go execute and go run 
that will represent this university and also be able to go win the Big 12. Coach Han said this may be the most depth that he's had along the offensive line during his coaching career. And he's coached a lot of places yes. and put a lot of guys in the NFL. Yep. When you hear that and you see it out on the practice field, what is, how does that make you feel knowing what you got up? No, the line? Coach Hand is second to none as far as O-line coaches go. And he, he can coordinate offenses. He can be a head coach. I mean, he'd be a phenomenal head coach. And his leadership and who he is as a person is off the charts. So, you know, uh, being able to work with him and really all the coaches on offense on, the, on a daily basis is, is very uh, exciting to me. Um, you know, I care about them tremendously and their input and in, in what they're doing. But Coach Hand, 100%, the big men lead the way. Without them, none of this works because your offensive line have got to be good. And uh, I've been blessed to be with great O-line coaches and, and very good. All our offenses, though, had great offensive lines. And your quarterback has to be the next guy that has to be able to, to distribute the ball correctly and has to be able to go run the offense, have leadership skills, has to have confidence, has to be able to do all those things that you want a quarterback to do. And then you got your other positions where, you know, I've always had great running backs. I've had great receivers. I've had great tight ends. So, you know, it's, it's you know, and we, we have a roster here where we can, we can do really anything we want, but you also have to be smart not to put in too much offense. You put in too much offense, it's like a, a really good glass of wine. It could be unbelievable. You pour too much, it just spills all over the place and it's a big mess. And so we can't do that, you know. So we have to make sure we're, we're smart with our install and what we're doing, but also that we go out and we go execute and we know what we're doing. And we do what we do better than what they do. Running backs, you've got options. They're different kind of guys. What do you like about the room? I love the room. It's dynamic. It's explosive. Um, they're unselfish. Um, they know that you know, they're all going to play at some time. Um, you know, and again, we we have different packages in different situations that we're going to play all of them, and they're going to have different roles. And it's a dynamic room, you know, and. You know, R.J. Harvey's one of the best I've been around. He's the complete back. You got Johnny Richardson, who's fast as complete can be. You can't tackle him in a phone booth, who can do anything. Um, you know, and then you got, um, you know, Jordan McDonald, who's your big back, your power guy. Is he and an Isaiah Bowser type? Uh... He's an Isaiah Bowser. I mean, he's got so many different qualities about him and such a great kid and such a kid that, that is smart and he understands and, He's got to continue to, to, to build himself and press because he's young, uh, but he, he's a guy that's very unselfish, and I love that about him. You got Demarcus Bowman, who, I mean, he just continues to show up in practice and continue to show up, and he's gotten so much better than he did in the spring with learning the offense. And he had a great summer, and it's because he went and invested in himself. And he invested in the offense, and he wanted to learn it because he wants to play. And now he's—you see a smile on his face all the time, and he's like—and all he's doing is just doing it one day at a time, versus worrying about, you know, anything else that's happened in his life. And he's not worried about what's going on, you know, in the future. He's just worried about where he is, and you can see that. And he's getting better daily. Alec Collar decides to come back, a sixth-year guy. How important is that in that role, especially with the chemistry he developed with John I mean, he's Rice Palmer? He's a leader. He's a great tight end. Uh, he's put on a ton, of, a lot more weight than he had in the past. I mean, he was in the 230s. He's now 245, 242 around there. Um, you can see that he's he's invested in himself, and and it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun to have him in the offense, and he is a leader. 100%. You got John Rice, you got Alec Holler, you got, you know, you got Lakai, who's 100% a leader. You got different leaders at different positions, and Alec Holler is a leader. Wide receivers. Uh, we know what we get from Kobe and Javon. How would you describe the rest of the competition? Um, you know, I think you're seeing what you're seeing is guys that have invested in themselves since January. Uh, a room that, you know, that you know, that's why Coach Mazan brought me here was to push the, the ball down the field and me convincing them that that, that we were going to do that and how we're going to be. The only way we're going to do it though is guess what? Receivers are going to have to catch. Well, obviously tight ends and running backs will have their time to catch the ball down the field. But if we're going to really push down the push the ball down the field, we got to have receivers, and it can't just be one guy or two guys. It's got to be a slew of them. And 
you know, the, the thing is, is that that room is embraced their roles and they're getting better and better and better. And you've seen it since February, February, March, April, June, and July, and now we're going into August. And it's like, okay, like their improvement is so great in that room. And have we finished? No, we still got a bunch of practices left. But you can see the room getting better, more confidence, um, you know, and they understand the offense and they understand when we call plays now what they have to get done. And they're in understanding the offense, you play faster and then you're able to go make more plays. And it's more natural. You don't have to more, think about it. You don't have to think. You can you see that maybe in John Rice Plumley that he was thinking? Yes. Yes. And John Rice was a great example of that. And. He now can, you know, he can pick up the remote and he can, he, you know, he can coach a lot of the offense. And, you know, we're putting in third downs tomorrow and we're putting in red zone, you know, all our red zone stuff on day five. And, you know, we're building the offense and it's exciting where we're going. He was new to you in spring. What impressed you seeing that he was moving from baseball to football and, you know, everything that went on in the spring game and the base? What? And you've done that. You've been that two-sport uh, Yeah, and athlete. I did the same thing. What did impress you knowing about that work ethic? Well, I knew what he was going through, and I told him what he was going to go through. And I said, it's going to be a grind. And I said, there will be a time where your body will, you know, will start to go, like, is, is this worth it? But it will be worth it in the end. And, you know, baseball is a little bit different than basketball because you run a ton in basketball. But the, but the, the, the fact that you go do it and – it, it's, it's you know that accomplishment and that that goal to be able to, to do it and do it good and be very good at it um, is you know it's an extreme it's it, it's an extreme accomplishment and then to to uh, transition now back to football and not have to worry about baseball right now is you can see John Rice is flourishing so he doesn't have to worry about going to baseball at the end of practice all he does is come back and just worry about football so it's it's exciting to, to have him full time and to be able to be on the field with him constantly, you know, from day, for, on a daily basis. What do you need him to do to make sure he stays healthy? Um, and I showed him, you know, I showed him how many times he got hit last year. He got hit 192 times. That adds up. Oh, yeah. Even if it isn't an injury causing yeah. hit, yeah. it's still a hit. Yeah. And then, you know, so the bottom 192? line 192 times. So, and that's not even in a full because he didn't play every game. No. So... <laughs> I said the only way. I said we, we have to stop that. That has got to stop. Um, you know, and is he going to run the ball? Yeah, he's going to run the ball. But he doesn't need to be a guy that's just constantly thinking he's a running back that throws. He's a quarterback, an NFL quarterback mentality, and you got to distribute the ball. And we're going to be playing against some some guys that are going to want to hurt you. And you know. There's going to be times to go take off and run and use that speed and be able to go run, but there's going to be times where you need to stay in the pocket and go distribute it to your teammates. Is that where you need them to think instead of act instinctively, perhaps? No, no one, don't. We, but the biggest thing is he was thinking about where to go with the ball versus being instinctive on his progressions, understanding defenses. So he, be instinctive about the passing, not rely upon your legs to, right. to make the play. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because he, I mean, he would look at one guy, maybe two, and then, you know, he knew he, he go, I'll go get the first down, instead of okay, it's cover three week. I know I got this, this, and this, and I got to fit the ball in here, and and this is and going through that and feeling that, and now you see his pocket movement and his throwing and where he's going with the ball, and and he's playing quarterback, and it's exciting, and you know, part of that too is is you know he played receiver for two years. You know, at, at Ole Miss, and then he came here and transitioned into quarterback, and it was a quick transition. And you know, it was he he wasn't. I don't. All I know is this: is he's doing everything I've asked, and the product that he's at right now, I'm very pleased with. And we got to continue to fine fine tune it as we get ready for the first game. You need this camp, but you may need a couple of your first games to to get him where you want to. Uh, I don't believe that. No, no, no. He'll be ready to go the first game. Oh, you'll see that. Yeah. So be ready to go. camp, come spring to fall, spring, and then you're going to have him ready. Because he summer. invested a ton this summer, fall camp, he'll be ready to go the first game. How excited are you about that first game? I'm very excited. Can't wait. You feel the vibe in this town about oh, moving yeah. to the Big 12? Oh, yeah. I feel the vibe. I, I know, I know what's, 
what this is about. I've been coaching for a long time, and this is what I do. And um, and you know, it's been my life. And uh, what's exciting now is I get to go coach for my alma mater and get to go represent them. And and uh, I just want to make everybody proud. That's my only goal. I asked John Rice if he's seen some of your game film, and he said he hadn't, but he's he's interested in that, so it yeah. might be a little fun to... Yeah. He wants to break down some plays, though. He wants to break down your film. Okay. Well, uh, the, the, you know, and, and that's fun to do and all that, and I could probably go find it, but at the end of the day, I'm, I'm more worried about him and developing him than looking back at my old film. But yeah, they're, they're, I'm sure we could find it one day.